Welcome to another Alpha Audio Alpha Labs video. Today we have a pretty quick and dirty test again. Well, that's the whole idea of these uh, tests, of course, to show you uh, what the influence is of certain aspects of the hi fi hobby on your performance of the system. I have powered up the Wavecrest again because this time I'm going to show you what the impact is of a coaxial cable on jitter. And it's a, it's a very easy, uh, quick and dirty test. Uh, and it, actually, I like it because it, it, it is reproducible, it is easy to do, and it will show you uh, the influence of a cable in a digital chain. So first of all, I'm gonna just use our uh, Hirschman uh, cable, which I use for calibrating the system. Um, the wave crest is all yeah pretty much warm I think I can show you no not force enabled yeah like this back I can show you what this cable does it actually uses the internal uh, system the internal clock it's a 10 megahertz clock you can see it's uh, 100 nanoseconds and we have yeah 2.4 picoseconds 34 picoseconds of total jitter. Know that the Wavecrest doesn't use this clock to measure jitter. Uh, measuring jitter works a different way with this system, but you use the internal clock for calibration and for some other tasks. But yeah, it's around two and a half picoseconds of, uh, of jitter. It's about right. And I will also do a phase noise measurement. Minus 66, that's about correct. Um, let me write it down, because then we can actually compare them. B and C, it's two and a half picoseconds of jitter, and minus 66.9 with 2.66 PS. Now, let's see what a uh, Zommer cable does. Remember, do realize that this one is longer than the other one. So this is 2.6, which makes sense because it's longer. It's 2.6 PS and we have, well, phase noise. Let's see what happens. The reason I started doing this is because I wanted to know what the influence is of a cable. And, um, well, the best way to do it is to make an objective measurement. <laughs> well, there we are, minus 66.4. So it's a little bit less, but it's really, really close. So, this one is perfectly fine. And then we have another one and it has a marker on it let's see what this one does wow that's 10.15 so that's actually four times worse than the other one 10.15 picoseconds there must be something wrong with that cable Let's see what the phase noise is. Minus 57, that's a lot worse. This is an M-Way cable by Audiomat, from, it's a Dutch producer. 10.15 picoseconds and minus 57, so we lost 9 dB and 9.887 that's not great let's see what this one does now I do need uh, to tell you that I needed a transfer plug or how do you say it um, well I need to go from coaxial uh, RCA to BNC so this one is not completely fair but let's see 
Well, 6.1, 6 that's not bad actually for a uh, RCA plug. It's not bad, not bad. And let's see what the face noise is. This is an ArtSpeak cable. Total jitter is 86. That's a little bit higher than I noticed because all the BNCs were around 35 to 38. Well, times two, it's actually quite the same. So this one is minus 59. Phase noise is relatively high, 6.2. Let's see what this old audio quest does. 4.18, 4.19. So that's really good actually. Yeah, 4.19 and Let's see what the phase noise will do. Well, I guess it's around 61, 62-ish. I'm not here to pick out a winner or say anything about this is the best cable. Well, I think the best cable is a BNC, purely because of a technical perspective and what I've heard in the listening room. Most BNCs just sound better. Well, 62.8 is actually better than I thought. I'm going to show you the influence of a power supply on a cable. Now I know this cable is that, that the Audiomat Mway is pretty instable actually. So I'm going to do a strip chart measurement to uh, show you what power supply noise does because it, it is all over the place this cable so it's really hard to uh, see. It's it's jumping already and there's not even noise right now um, so I'm gonna do this wow god and I'm gonna load this um, adapter now there is already noise of course in the room because of all the uh, devices but let's see what happens when I put a power adapter right next to it See, I moved the cable and it shifted already. And that's because this cable is actually not coaxial. It is really moving up and down. And I tried to make a lock, but yeah, it's impossible. Uh, let me put in one amp on. See, there we go. Because now you can see that it's really spiking. It's completely off the charts. That's because this power supply is inducting noise in the cable. Now I'm going to switch it off and start it again because it's completely whacked out now. See, now we're back. It's still moving. If I move the cable, the, the, the chart will be up and down. That's jitter I'm measuring, so <laughs> if you move the cable, your jitter spectrum will move as well. And now I'm switching on the power adapter. And you can see it's shooting up and down. It's really off the charts, it's 230 and it's gone. So that's what noise will do to your digital cable when um, when it's not shielded and this cable was already really really weird remember it's the cable that had above 10 PS now it's 15 the second time I measured it but that's because this cable wasn't coaxial at all it's actually lamp cord with a BNC connector soldered to it this is not how a uh, digital cable should be uh, should be made. Of course, it's, it should be a coaxial cable, and there are more examples of that. If I pick a normal, decent c cable, this is an Audio Quest Diamond. Yeah, it's expensive, but you can see it's triple shielded, it's coaxial, it's made. Con yeah, well, it's made with the specifications in in its mind. This is how a digital cables should be and this is also how they create it well this of course 
is completely unacceptable because your jitter will be all over the place. If I pick a decent Zommer cable or Hirschman or whatever and I do this again, I will every time I will get the same specs 2.6 picoseconds, Zommer 2.6 picoseconds. It's stable as it should be. And now I'm doing this uh, strip charge measurement and if I move it it's not all over the place it's still way well within spec it's it's doing absolutely nothing and if I put the power supply next to it absolutely no change because it's shielded as it should be and if I move it again it won't jump off the charts so this is uh, how I measure digital cables, uh, well a, li a little part of it of course, I check if it's within spec, I check if it's uh, measuring normally as it should, if it's not all over the place, if it's shielded in a proper way, uh, that's how we do it. Um, I hope you like these uh, kinds of videos, I hope you like this episode about, well, kind of a nerdy subject, coaxial cables, and hope to see you next time. Bye bye.